We've seen how we can identify consumer surplus in the market picture, and now we'll do the same for producer surplus. Now by producer surplus, we simply mean profit. So in the short run, producer surplus is short run profit. In the long run, it's long run profit. So let's start with the short run. Now there are two ways we can identify profit in the short run, depending on which curve we use. Let's start with the marginal cost curve. We know that wherever price hits, firms are going to produce where price is equal to marginal cost. So the firm is going to produce this quantity. And we immediately see the first part of what we need to identify profit. The first part is revenue. Revenue is price times output. So this box gives us our total revenue box. Now we have to subtract from that the firm's total short run costs. And in the short run, the firm doesn't have any fixed costs. So all the costs are incorporated in the marginal cost curve. We can identify the cost of the first unit by just the marginal cost of that unit. Then the additional cost for the second unit is the additional cost the marginal cost curve shows us, then the additional cost for the third unit, and so forth. So if we add up all of these costs, we get an area underneath the marginal cost curve, an integral of the marginal cost curve up to this quantity. That area underneath that curve is our total short run cost. It's simply the sum of all the marginal costs of each unit that we produce up to where we stop. When we subtract that area underneath the marginal cost curve from the total revenue box, we get this area up here. And that is our producer surplus or our profit, simply total revenue minus total costs. We can do the same thing in the picture below. If we know we're going to produce this quantity at this price, so this is where the marginal cost curve crosses, we again have our total revenue box, price times quantity. But now we know that at this quantity, our average cost is this much. So we can bring that average cost over. That's our average cost of producing if we produce this profit maximizing quantity. Total cost is equal to average cost times output. So if we multiply that average cost by output, we get our total cost box, this smaller box. So if we subtract this total cost box from the larger total revenue box, we're left with an area that's again equal to short run profit or to produce a surplus. So two equivalent ways of measuring profit, these areas should be exactly the same size if we draw it exactly right. Now we're going to take these two methods and combine them. And you'll see why in a minute. So let's draw again the firm's marginal cost curve. And let's add the average cost curve. Now we're going to imagine that for some reason the firm decides to initially stop producing here, let's call this X bar, at the lowest point of the average cost curve. That's where the shutdown price happens. So if the firm stops producing here, but the price is up here, the firm's revenues would be equal to this box, price times output, and the firm's cost would be identifiable with the average cost curve. So if we bring that over, we get the average cost of producing. And we can use this method to find where the profit would be if we produce this quantity. The average cost times quantity gives us our total costs. Price times quantity gives us our total revenue. Subtract that smaller box from the larger box, and we get profit if we stop producing there.
That's using this method, the average cost curve. Then we say, well, we know the firm's not going to stop producing here. The firm's going to keep producing until price is equal to marginal cost. So it's actually going to produce this quantity out here. The same quantity as over here. We already know how much profit the firm would make if it produced this quantity. So now we just have to figure out the additional profit the firm would make if it produced the, this additional amount. And now we're going to use the marginal cost curve to do that. The additional profit we make from the next unit we produce is the additional revenue we get, that's the price, minus the additional cost we incur. For the next good after that, it's the additional revenue minus the additional cost. Additional revenue minus additional cost. So if we continue to produce, we are going to make this much revenue plus this area here. We're just using this method to identif identify profit for the second part. So now we have this picture where profit or producer surplus is everything below the price down to that marginal cost curve, but cut off here. But now let's put the supply curve into this picture. The supply curve is equal to the marginal cost curve. down to the shutdown price, and then we supply nothing. So this becomes our supply curve, and the profit or the producer surplus is just the area underneath price down to the supply curve. So if we now go to our market picture, we have an easy way of identifying profit or producer surplus. We put price on the vertical axis, output on the horizontal, we have our market demand curve, the sum of the individual demand curves, and our short-run market supply curve. That's just the sum of all these supply curves. This is a short-run supply curve. That gives us the market price that firms get to sell at. And this tells me that I can identify profit for individual firms as the area underneath price down to the supply curve. So when I sum all of these, that should still be the case. It'll still be the area underneath the price down to the supply curve. So producer surplus will simply be this area underneath price. That's probably an area you've seen before in the previous economics class. So now we have producer surplus in our short run market picture. Now what about the long run? Well, in the long run, we know that firms make zero profit because price has been driven down to the zero profit price. So in the long run, the long run supply curve is actually flat. In the long run, we have a flat, perfectly elastic long run supply curve because firms enter and exit until price is driven down to the zero profit price. Put in our demand curve, the market will produce this quantity. But there's no little triangle like there was over here for producer surplus. That's because long run profit is equal to zero. So in the long run, there is no long run profit. There is no long run producer surplus. And so all the surplus in the market accrues to just the consumers.